Vantage's Mini Hawks are pretty unique in the market for a few reasons. The number one of those reasons is they're called hybrid anamorphics. I mean, it's printed on the lens barrel, but what does that even mean? Thanks to Steve at Sim International here in Vancouver, we get to take a look at them and answer that question. The footage used in this episode is a remix of Vantage's Mini Hawk's proof of performance short film to highlight the lens's capabilities. Plus, I'm throwing in footage from TV shows and feature films made using these lenses. Located in Germany, Vantage makes Hawk regular anamorphic lenses. Germany, a new adventure, no? This is not an adventure, it's a punishment. Germany's boring. It will be different this time. On a page that talks about Vantage's extensive understanding of anamorphics and the challenges of working with such optics, the Mini Hawks are introduced as the fix for every single issue. Here's a quote. The Mini Hawks have certain advantages over current technologies. They are compact, lightweight, and fast. They have super close focus capabilities, almost like macro lenses, and they are well corrected in terms of geometric distortion and have no breathing while focusing. But you know one thing Vantage's page does not say? That Mini Hawks are not anamorphic lenses. There are no cylindrical elements in them. Mini Hawks are the fanciest anamorphics in the world, used on lots of commercials, TV shows, and feature films, always in high demand from the rental houses they're available at. Derived from the design of the super fast Vantage One lenses, the Mini Hawks are the first set of spherical prime lenses that features an adjustable oval iris to emulate anamorphic oval bokeh while still using spherical optics. The lenses are indeed much smaller and lighter than your usual anamorphic lens, and the focal lengths printed on them are anamorphic equivalent, already taking into account a cinemascope crop on the footage. So while this is a 20mm spherical lens by all accounts, the barrel reads 40 millimeters because its field of view is the same as a 40mm two times anamorphic lens. Does that not make you confused? Because it makes me. They have awesome close focus. This is kind of wild. It is. How close can we get? No. Dude, this is the <laughs> best lens. This is the best lens. <laughs> 10 inches from the 35 mil to the 65 mil, one foot two inches between the 80 mil and the 135 mil, and one foot seven inches for the 180 mil. These focal lengths in anamorphic equivalent numbers, of course. Aperture is also super fast at T1.7 while retaining critical sharpness when wide open, which is something almost no anamorphics will do. Reacher features great extreme close-up shots that are plenty sharp and undistorted. The size and weight of each lens are also pretty similar. They measure between 5 and 5.8 inches across the set, with less than an inch difference between the longest lens, the 35mm, and the other ones. For weight, they're all between 3.3 and 4.6 pounds, which is a fair amount of variation, but shouldn't give you a nightmare when switching lenses and balancing out a gimbal. Those are all very non-anamorphic-like qualities. So how do they get the look? I talked about anamorphics earlier, and that was your hint. These lenses feature an oval aperture to shape bokeh. In fact, they feature two overlapping irises, a normal circular 12-bladed one, and another made up of two blades, which shapes the aperture as an oval and cuts almost two stops of light away. Bringing the lenses from the original T1 of the Vantage Ones to T1.7 here, this design gives them intense oval bokeh through the entire iris range. The ovals are not the traditional two times, but adjusted from focal length to focal length, according to the Cine Lens Manual, to give you noticeable results. This means pushing further than two times at wider focal lengths and creating a unique style to out-of-focus areas in bokeh. By using these lenses, we're capturing a lot more vertical information 
which allows for plenty of reframing in post-production, as well as gives us tons to work with if we decide to push further into simulating geometric distortion, as that's something the lenses steer clear from. Even at minimum focus with super wide focal lengths, distortion is very controlled and not quite reminiscent of anamorphics. Looking at the proof of concept test Vantage put out when the lenses were first released, we can see a lot of chromatic aberration when wide open and that we get bokeh a bit distorted here and there. From Reacher, the lenses are pretty sharp wide open as bokeh is constant through the entire series. Except when we go to flashback moments, uh, when cinematographers Plante and McMurray decided to go full spherical and a yellow streak filter. You can see the round bokeh and the lines cutting through it too. Go anamorphic! The flares from the Mini Hawks are nothing like anamorphic flares. No streaks. Those will either be added with a streak filter or in post. In fact, the lenses are pretty resistant to flaring in general, but strong light sources will have strong fringing around them that is pretty noticeable. Peter Martin, director of the test film and founder of Vantage Film, says every scene and element in the frame has been precisely chosen to provide clear examples of lens characteristics. In every focus setting, camera movement and rack focus has been carefully selected to display the lens's performance. Which is a mindset I love for a lens test short film. You've seen the Mini Hawks in action on Netflix horror Brand New Cherry Flavor, as well as a handful of feature films since they came out in 2015. I binged all of Reacher in one day, which started with, let's pay close attention to the character of those lenses. And by the end of the show, I can say I really dig the look. The Mini Hawks are a very good direction for folks that like the anamorphic look, but are totally over streak flares or don't want to deal with lots of diopters and other anamorphic compromises. In fact, avoiding the anamorphic hassle is the reason many directors and cinematographers choose to film with the mini hawks, like Xavier Grobat in Amazon Prime's Them, where the lenses helped streamline the production schedule and allowed them to film four to five pages a day. While with the two times anamorphics, the team could usually only accomplish two and a half pages a day. And hey, that's a split diopter shot right there. It turns out hybrid anamorphics are sphericals with an oval aperture and optical performance designed to carefully emulate other anamorphic artifacts, which means sacrificing image quality to a certain extent. Before you get excited about more lenses using the Mini Hawks's oval aperture, know that Vantage Film holds a very recent patent on the aperture, which prevents competition. What do you think of this approach to anamorphic? I thought the concept of anamorphic could only be cheap, but it turns out I was wrong, as these lenses are pretty pricey at $30,000 per lens on average, and getting time with them was a big challenge. Thanks to Sim International for letting us play with them for a day, and I hope you learned something cool here today. <laughs> See you on the next one. Shit the things out. Okay, nothing seems to have gone awfully wrong, and we are going to cut. Ow.